Hi, Scorpio. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for August of 2021. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mijas in San Francisco. Well, Scorpio, this month's emphasis in your social 11th house might make you want to make the scene socially, hanging out with people, friends, groups, community, which is uncharacteristic for you, shall we say, because you do have a strong sense of privacy. And if today's horoscope brings up questions for you about how your social life could be improved, you can find a link for a reading about that. Probably the natal and transit reading would be the best choice. And you can find it in the YouTube description below. Well, we've all been engaged in a relationship retrospection period uh, because of Juno traveling along through Sagittarius. That's been happening right here in your second house of personal finances, also the house of your body and your food. So you may have been really re-examining deeply your relationship and whether or not it allows you room for growth, most particularly financially as your own independent entity uh, connected to another person, but not necessarily merged with them. This has been going on for the last 16 weeks but it's drawing to a close on the 2nd of August. And after that, Juno will begin moving direct again, but very slowly, she will continue in her shadow period throughout the end of the month. And we'll all still be putting the pieces back together of our relationships and asking ourselves, what are they gonna look like going forward? And in your case, you may be asking yourself, what is the role of my money in this relationship? And, uh, and how do I improve my nest egg and feel a sense of freedom around my money, um, possibly a sense of separation. Um, you can find out more about Juno Retrograde in our playlist uh, for June, actually, June 2021. That's where we've put our Juno Retrograde video this year. Julia, I think you've got some stuff for the Scorpios of the world about Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Yes, I do, Jamie. Well, hi, Scorpio. I'll begin with Mercury. That's the planet that represents the mind. And where we have it is where we usually have a lot of communicating going on in our lives. So Mercury starts the month in your 10th house. This is the house of career. It's also the house of your public reputation. It's a very public house in general. So for the first, you know, 10, 11 days of the month, you could be spending a lot of time thinking, strategizing, planning about your career. If you're not in a career, it's a great time for writing your resume and working on that. And it's also great transit if you have any public speaking you need to do. Maybe that's in school, maybe that's on your job, or even just in your life in general. Now on August 11th, Mercury moves into the 11th house. That's the house of friends as well as long-term goals. So for the um, rest of the month, you could be spending a lot of time, you know, really, really communicating a lot more with your friends or any of the groups that you're a part of in your life. Um, when Mercury's in the 11th house, you also might be strategizing. Your mind might be on a lot of more sort of future things because this is the house of hopes, wishes, and dreams. So those, those are the goals that we have in life that take many years to realize too. So a lot of times strategizing and planning around that. And there's a lot of 11th house activity in general this month too, as, as Jamie was just saying. Um, now, um, Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships, the first half of the month, she is going to be in your 11th house as well. So this is a great time for getting along well with your friends. If you're in a relationship, a romantic relationship, you might enjoy your partner in the context of your friends as well. And if you're a part of any groups, that could be like a writer's workshop, a recovery program, a professional association, you'll enjoy your group a lot more, a lot more harmony too, instead of maybe some backbiting if that ever happens. Um, um, then on August 15th, Venus moves into your 12th house. This is a very isolated house. It has a lot to do with spirituality as well as <laughs> altruism. So the second half of the month, you might be withdrawing a lot more socially too, um, preferring to spend a little bit more time on your own. If you've got a partner, you might enjoy hanging out with them at home than kind of going out and seeing other people and doing other things. Um, 
And since this is the house of charity, you might enjoy kind of either giving a little bit of your time, a little bit of your money to some sort of altruistic cause in your life. Then Mars, the planet of action and activity, is in the 11th house all month. So um, with Mars in the 11th, Mars is the planet of drive. You're going to be really, really driven uh, towards your long-term goals in life. Um, and since the 11th house does rule our, our friendships as well as our um, uh, groups that we're a part of, Mars is a bit of a competitive planet too. So there might be a little bit of competition in your friendship circle if you're on any sports team, because that would be an 11th house thing. Um, you know, there might be a little extra, yeah, competitiveness on the field this month. Well, I want to tell you about a couple of moons happening this month. The first one is happening on August 8th. <clears throat> it's a new moon in Leo, which means your 10th house, arena of career, uh, public image. And uh, this moon being a new moon, it's a great time for planting seeds. And I would say this is a good time for planting seeds of how you can shine more in your career in the future. Uh, we're calling this one pride springing from wholeness, not ego. Uh, because two planets are interacting with this moon, one of them stressfully, the other harm harmoniously. The stressful interaction is Uranus, which sits here in your seventh house and is pressing on this moon to just stick out like a sore thumb. You know, um, I am a person and I will be seen. That's what Uranus is bringing to this. But Chiron is bringing in a much more gentle approach of a like, I'm in Aries, Chiron is in Aries, and I want to heal my sense of self so that you know, when I feel proud of myself, it comes from a good place rather than a sort of an egotistical place of need to be, you know, the biggest and the boldest everywhere. So um, Chiron is, um, is bringing that sweet harmony to this moon, which is happening here in the 10th house. And um, some wonderful seeds could be planted in your career from that. The next thing I want to tell you about is that Uranus is going retrograde this month. So I mentioned Uranus, it's sitting in your seventh house. Watch this spot right here for a little red RX to appear, showing that Uranus has gone retrograde. Yes, so Uranus is always bringing radical shifts, usually conceptual shifts, a shift in the very framework in which you see something. Uh, getting ideas that can cause a ripple effect of change in your mind. It's been traveling along through your seventh house for some time already, making that kind of radical shift in your one-on-one -on -one relationships, whether they are personal or professional. And so you might feel this retrograde turning day when it happens, or even up to a week on either side of it. Uranus goes retrograde on August 19th. And if you're having a Uranus transit this year, you might feel this as a turning point in that conceptual shift process going on in your relationships. Um, we've made a video to explain Uranus transits to you in more depth. It's uh, called Uranus transits, how they feel and how to handle them. And you'll find it in, um, in our uh, August, this month's playlist for August, 2021. That's where you'll find it, along with the videos for both moons. So speaking of both moons, I want to tell you about the second moon of this month, which is a full moon in Aquarius falling in your fourth house, accompanied by Jupiter and opposite the sun in Leo in your 10th house. And um, <clears throat> so when the moon is uh, in the fourth house, it's generally a really nice time for family. This particular moon is very, very social. Uh, we're calling it Hot Summer Night Party Moon, and uh, the chance of a family gathering uh, seems pretty good, and in fact, you might even want to host one, um, but I would be really cautious about how much alcohol you put out, um, or we know whatever it is that you like to provide the guests for their fun at the party, because the chances of somebody overindulging and making an ass out of themselves are pretty good. And that's because of this Jupiter retrograde hanging out actually quite close to this moon, which is hard to see in this view um, because it's adjusted for time zone. But believe me, this Jupiter is really wrapped up with this moon very tightly. 
And so beware of overindulgence on your part or on the part of a family member that is invited to this gathering. <coughs> and then uh, pretty closely after that moon, on uh, August 22nd, we have the beginning of a new season. Virgo season begins. Uh, the sun leaves Leo and your 10th house moves into your 11th house, which again is that social house, the house of friends and communities, groups that you belong to, people of like mind, contexts in which you feel contextualized. And uh, all of the activity in this house might really make you feel quite social. Venus has passed through making those places charming to be in and you charming to be around in those places. Mercury has brought up some interesting and stimulating conversations in those group contexts. Mars has maybe brought a little bit of combative energy, but also a lot of vigor for group projects. And now the sun is entering into this house, um, bringing the spotlight of attention. And I like to say that wherever your attention goes, that's where things grow. And so putting some of your high quality attention uh, into your community this month could yield some marvelous fruit. And there you have it, Scorpio. Hope you enjoyed the horoscope that we made for you. You can always find our horoscopes on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, or on our website, pandoraastrology.com, along with the news of the month and our monthly forecast and classes that you can take and uh, readings that you can get. And until next time, We'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.